will make a drastic difference on how you watch the TV, of how you perceive it. You'll enjoy, you'll enjoy the news better. And listen, I'm not making a dime off any of these electronics. I'm just telling you. Uh, listen, if I could, I could talk Chuck Harder into upgrading his screen, and he saw the difference night and day because he had one of those old screens. And I rec- I, I told him just like that several years ago. And he enjoys a flat screen himself now, even in the nursing home. So if old Chuck Harder, thrifty truck Chuck Harder, could, well, the the the, the spots, uh, the TVs, uh, will fit right where you're at. Yeah, I mean they have all different sizes. You can either get the 50 inch. Well, if that's too big for you, that's incredible. The 40 inch, the 30 inch. Uh, it'll sit. You can mount it on the wall. You can stick it on your coffee table. Whatever you want, it's just there. And yeah, upgrade. Do that's what I'm talking about. Doing something nice for yourself for the new year. Um, Representative Jackson Lee. She flies a lot, just like a lot of Congress people do out of Washington. But she's got herself in a little snafu here. Okay, we're talking Sheila Jackson Lee. She's firing back at the Democratic Congresswoman's accusations of racism while challenging the airline's account of the incident. You see, Jean Marie Simon, she's an attorney and a private school teacher. She lives in the D.C. area. She became the latest face of airline passenger woes when she detailed on Facebook and then later on to the news media how she lost her seat to the Texas lawmaker. But a dispute... Uh, a statement from the United Airlines seeking to explain the switch out of a seat because what happened was the congresswoman ended up sitting in Jean Marie Simon's seat on a flight and she lost her, her, her seat to the congresswoman. And the only way that they were able to describe it, the airline, United, was she must have canceled her ticket. Now, this is not the first time that this has happened with Representative Jackson Lee. She has bumped more people in the last several years. And in Vanity Magazine, which is a very left-leaning magazine, by the way, in the Washington, Washington D.C. area, uh, she, she is one of the meanest people that you'd ever want to meet. And she, she, she's chalking this all off. As um, as racism. I'm not even kidding. Simon originally accused United of bumping her seat. This is what the news says. Her first class seat. It was a first class seat, by the way. On December 18th, it was in flight in order to accommodate the Texas congresswoman. Now, if, at first, I, has, I, I should say this. Simon didn't know who was in her seat as she argued at the gate. United eventually gave her $500 voucher and reseated her in the Economy Plus section. In Simon's original Facebook page, Simon said another Texas congresswoman then informed her a fellow member of the delegation was in her seat and regularly does this to passengers. I could not see who has boarded the flight. I did not even know who she was. This is the school teacher. This is the attorney. We're talking Jean Maria Simon. Again, responding to Representative Jackson Lee's racism claim, Simon proceeded to take a photo of Jackson Lee, have a tense encounter with a flight attendant who allegedly threatened to remove her, has been battling with the airline ever since she got home. On one front, United claims Simon lost her seat because she canceled her flight via the app, which she denies. And on another, Jackson Lee piled on this week by recusing her statement, chalking up Simon's discontent to racial bias since this was not any fault of mine the way the indi- the individual continued to act appeared to me upon reflection because i was an african american woman seemingly to easy target with the african american flight attendant who was very nice she wrote This saddens me, especially at this time of year, given all of the things we have to work on to help people. But in the spirit of the season and out of the sincerity of my heart, if it is perceived that I 
had anything to do with this, I am kind enough <laughs> to simply say, she continues, sorry. Simon is focusing her energy mostly on dealing with United, not Jackson Lee, but was telling Fox News the only way she is relevant is that she um, she is that uh, she she's documented she has documented history of demanding first class service. And as for comment, Jackson Lee spokesman uh, Rux Russell said in a statement, the Congresswoman regrets any inconvenience that her travel may have caused to any passenger. However. The issue in question involves the passenger and United Airlines. Okay, so they're of course they're not going to admit that they're getting preferred seating for the Congresswoman. Bottom line is this is not just thinking about it a sole issue with Representative Jackson Lee because there's so many uh, Washington. Senators, congresswomen, congressmen that have this sense of entitlement. And she pushes her weight around equally. What I'm offended about, to be honest with you, is the racism comment. Just not necessary. And this is something that a lot of the people on the left do that are African-American. I mean, wouldn't it be bizarre if, you know, you were white and you just brought up the case, you know, because I'm white, I know you treated me differently because I'm white. You think I'm one of those Trump supporters, don't you? I mean, this is just ridiculous. You talk, and that's what I call a black chip. A black chip. I don't mean anything racist by it. But I call it a black chip if you're using it to just try to justify your behavior. This is ridiculous. And to me, it makes other African Americans look bad by using that card. And it's a convenient card, don't you think, huh? It's a convenient card. Stop using it. And if it is some truth behind racism, and it is truth and you're justified, then use it. But don't use it to justify a behavior that is non-justifiable. And the airline is just as guilty. Because, the you know, the airline uh, accommodated her. And, of course, she's a regular frequent flyer, so they don't want her to go to a different airline. As well as anybody else uh, in Washington, because it's a, you know, they like the flights. And a lot of the congressmen, congresswomen, they use those those planes. So I think United, uh, they need to be a little bit, uh, you know, they they need to just be a little bit more on par with with these these folks, you know, that uh, fly that are in power. I, I I mean, they just simply forget. And she does have this this congresswoman a reputation of being the meanest. Uh, representatives in Washington. Um, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, you know, here it is, folks. People pay for their, their airline ticket, and then somebody comes up and says, do you know who I am? And you're supposed to just get out of your seat and say nothing. But it happens at restaurants. It it, it happens. It, it's just, it's inconvenient. And, but, you know, this lady used her frequent flyer miles and she was really, she's a school teacher and an attorney, but she was looking forward to using her uh, accumulated frequent flyer miles to be able to just sit in first class, something that she didn't ordinarily do, but something that this congresswoman does. Isn't it nice to be able to fly first class? Hmm? That's a nice thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite movies. My Big Fat Greek Wedding. There's one and two. And the actress, uh, Lanai Kazan, she's making headlines again. She was arrested on Christmas Eve. No, she wasn't starring in a movie. This wasn't a movie or anything like that. She wasn't drinking and driving. She was shoplifting from a supermarket. 
But now they're saying it may not have been the first time. 77 years old. Five-finger discount at 77. According to TMZ, Kazan had shoplifted from Gelson's Grocery Store at least a few times before Christmas Eve bust. Uh, the gossip site reports the actress allegedly had a a routine at the store that included placing items uh, in her handbasket and walking past the checkout line. And store uh, reportedly had security footage that shows her shoplifting in the past. So, as a result, uh, Gelson was on alert for Gazan, uh, according to TMZ, and staff was ready to apprehend her the next time she attempted to get away with not paying for groceries. And she was arrested for $180 worth of food from the supermarket. And she broke. The actress from one of the highest grossing, by the way, romantic comedies ever claimed at the time of her arrest, uh, she's destitute. Uh, the actress walked out of Gelson's uh, in Los Angeles area on Christmas Eve before an employee stopped her at her car and then called the cops, kind of held her up there at her vehicle. Gazan, whose uh, excuse was reportedly that she was penniless, was arrested for petty theft and released from custody at the police station without bail. But uh, Gazan played the the uh, the matriarch. Uh, Maria, remember the original 2002 film as well as the sequel, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2? It happens. I uh, don't know if it's one of these weird obsessions that they go out and they just do it for the high or that she's actually penniless, but it won't be the won't be the last time that Hollywood stars end up destitute. Yeah, it, 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 it Gary Coleman uh, comes to mind when I was out. Uh, I almost went to work for CBS and I decided not to move out to Los Angeles it was several years ago. And I actually had an appointment at Nickelodeon and Gary Coleman was actually the security guard leading into the Nickelodeon, um, you know, parking garage. <laughs> I am not even kidding. Gary Coleman. You know, with all that money, they spend it. Uh, they get cash and they burn it so fast with drugs or family or too many properties. They just, they just, They don't know how to manage their money. They just did not take the fame. It came quick, came fast. And just like people that win the lottery all the time, they just don't know how to deal with it. It's like uh, blood money. When people come into estate money, that's why I like when there's some conditions for younger people that inherit something from you, that there's conditions in the will, that they get some kind of financial advice from somebody or that you don't dole, dole it out at all at once if you're leaving that kind of money. It's just smart to be able to do that until they can handle it. Because they go off and blow it on the stupidest of things. Yeah, you think they'd pay off their bills and stay out of debt and invest in things like that. Yeah, you and I would do that. But not everybody has that same mindset. Well, it depends on how you grow up. That has a lot to do with it. By the way, this is a sad story. and But I think it's a telling story at the same time. North Korea, they had a scientist who was working on their nukes decided he had enough. And apparently he had a lot of anxiety over his research. And he decided to go cross the border somehow into China, but was captured by the Chinese and sent back over the border, according to a report. The uh, defector worked as a researcher in the State Academy of Sciences in Pyongyang and was part of a group of North Koreans caught in Shenyang in early November, a source inside the reclusive country told Radio Free Asia they were sent back from the northern Chinese city to North Korea on November 17th, and the scientist reportedly died by taking poison while awaiting interrogation. He killed himself only a few hours after he was placed in solitary confinement at the State Security Department, according to a source, he died before he could be questioned about the reason for his escape and who helped him and what his route had been. 
The story said that the man believed to be in his early 50s reportedly took 